Hi, are you considering selling one of your investment properties and want to save on capital gains taxes? Today, we're going to go over the process for doing so. It's called a 1031 exchange right now. Before we start discussing the 1031 exchange process, it's important to say that I am not a 1031 facilitator. I have, however, assisted many clients in the process and have worked with several 1031 facilitators such as First American Exchange Company and others. As a final caveat, and with anything legal or tax related, you should always consult with your attorney or accountant to see if the information I'm providing would work in your particular unique tax situation. So what is a 1031 exchange? The government created a mechanism in which investors could defer paying capital gains on their investment. A 1031 exchange is based upon the Internal Revenue Code 1031, of course. Generally, any real property can be exchanged provided it is held for productive use in trade or business or for investment and is exchanged for property of a like kind and that will also be held for one of these same purposes. Here's the rules. The definition of like kind is pretty broad for real estate. In some cases, you could exchange an office building for vacant land or an apartment building could be exchanged for a single family residence or duplex. To keep this video simple, however, we're going to assume that you want to sell your current single family home, which you've been renting, and replace it with another single family home to rent. One rule to remember is that the taxpayer selling the home or the entity must be the same taxpayer or entity who buys the replacement home. The first requirement of a 1031 exchange is that the entire transaction must be structured as an exchange rather than a normal sale of the property and a purchase of a new property. You must use a qualified intermediary to facilitate the paperwork in the sale of an existing home and the purchase of the exchanged home. The taxpayer investor must sign an exchange agreement, assignment of the purchase contract, as well as other documentation before the first property sells. Then the qualified intermediary must hold the proceeds from that sale until they are applied to the purchase of a new property. During the process, assuming the paperwork has been correctly signed, the intermediary does not actually need to take title of the property, it's that the proceeds must be held. So what is tax deferred? To defer all the tax due, the investor must purchase a like-kind property equal to or greater than the property that they're selling. The term equal or greater can apply to value, equity, and debt, and debt can be replaced with cash. But any further discussion as to your, the best options with this regard should be discussed with your accountant or attorney. 45 day rule. The investor has 45 days from the closing of the first property to identify a replacement property. This identification must be specific and in writing. If the investor finds another property, identifies it in writing, and then closes on that property before the end of the 45 days, then that property is considered property identified in the exchange. If the investor finds another property but does not close on it before the end of 45 days, then the investor must clearly identify the property and submit it in writing to the facilitator before the 45th day. There are other options if you wish to identify multiple properties, but this can get pretty complex and it's something that's outside of uh, this uh, video, but you should discuss it with your facilitator directly. These other options are called the three property rule and the 200% rule. Okay, let's do a simple example. Let's say that you bought a home 10 years ago for $200,000, which you rented out to tenants. During that time period, you made improvements to the home, which your accountant determines raises the adjusted basis of the home from 200,000 to 250. If you sold your home today and decided to buy another rental property without the benefit of a 1031 exchange, then you would have a taxable gain if you sold your home for over $250,000. It would not matter if you replace that home with another rental property or not. If, however, you use the 1031 exchange process while selling the first property and then bought a like-kind rental property of equal or greater value, you would not have an immediate taxable gain to deal with. So here's the process. Your realtor should have a basic understanding of the 1031 process. They are not 1031 facilitators, however, and they're not attorneys or accountants. What your realtor will do is explain the basic process and then put you in touch with a 1031 facilitator if you're unable to find one of your own. You should discuss the process with that facilitator. Typically, a 1031 facilitator will charge a flat fee of $500 to $750, somewhere around there, to do all the paperwork required in the transaction. 
The sale of your home will follow the normal process, but you will have additional paperwork to fill out before and at closing. Now this is before and at closing of your first house and the same thing for your second house. Most facilitators will want to talk to you at least a couple of weeks before you close on the sale of your first home. You know, it's okay to start looking for your new property, but remember that you have 45 days after you close on your existing home to find a new property. You don't have to close on that new property in those 45 days. All you have to do is identify those properties or property. It is best, however, to be under contract with your new property before the 45 days are up because you can't come up with a new list of identified properties after the 45 days. So you need to make sure it's pretty solid that it's going to be your house. 1031 exchanges are a great way to protect your investment over the long term, and it's well worth looking into. For a free guide to 1031 exchanges, be sure to click on the link below and I'll send you a PDF on it. Thank you very much and please give me a call if I can help in any way. See ya.